Hello Koi enthusiasts, I hope everything is going well and thanks for watching again to a new video of About Koi and in this video we will go in detail about the Yamabuki Ogon variety. Izumiya is just the most famous breeder when we talk about the Yamabuki Ogon. It has the largest Yamabuki Ogon from Japan, the brightest yellow and just the best Yamabuki that you probably will be able to get out of Japan. Ryu Mano is currently running it. Ryu is still a young guy, but surely has a lot, a, really a lot of knowledge about Yamabuki Ogon. And of course he also got that from his father and grandfather. But the nice part is that also Ryu does talk some English. So for sure you will be able to commun communicate with him. And that is also quite nice when you are in Japan at a local breeder. So before we continue to deep dive into the koi farm of Izumiya, what can you actually expect in this video? So first of all, we will start with a background of Yamabuki Ogon, of course. And secondly, we will deep dive a little bit further into the Izumiya koi farm and tell you a little bit about uh, his farm and also show you one of his koi houses. Then we are going to discuss the yellow on this color and how the yellow actually develops over time. The fourth item is Fukurin on Yamabuki Ogon and Fukurin has to do with skin quality and the fifth point is when you want to select a Yamabuki Ogon for your own backyard pond what do you look for? What are the key aspects and criteria that you should take into consideration when buying a Yamabuki? So let's start with the background of this koi variety Yamabuki Ogon. Nothing special or is it actually quite special? Well, for me, I think it is nice, but it is of course up to you. I do think it is a simple variety, but also quite nice variety. I think that yellow really has a nice contrast if you have multiple Gosanke in your pond. So Gosanke means you have a lot, of, a lot of Showa, Kohaku, Sanke. So that means lots of red, most probably, and also white. And combined with one or two yellow Koi, that is really quite cool. And even though this variety is just a one colored metallic fish, there is more than enough to tell about it. So, did you know, for example, that Yamabuki means yellow chrysanthemum flower? Maybe it makes sense if I show you this or this. You can also spot that different colors of yellow chrysant in each scale. So it's not just one yellow color, but you can spot multiple with different grades of intensity in it. It looks like as if the middle of the scale looks deeper yellow and then the sides of the scale have more white and a lighter color yellow. That is quite nice when you look closely. And did you know that Yamabuki actually is a metallic fish? And you can spot that metallic everywhere. The Yamabuki looks a little bit shiny and they have a bit of luster on their skin. But that metallic part of Yamabuki Ogon you can actually spot really easily. If you look at the fins, you can directly see that it looks like there is a little bit of shiny, yes, kind of shiny and luster um, a layer over it. And also on the head, you can see that on the gel plates and also on the entire body actually, you can see that it shines a little bit. So that's how you can spot the metallic part in the Yamabuki Ogum. The second part of this video will be a quick look at the Izumiya Koi farm. The Izumiya Koi farm is a farm with a history of over 80 years old. It was founded around 1938. And still today it is the most famous breeder for Yamabuki Ogon in Japan. And probably worldwide as well of course. And if you know some breeders in Japan, the chances are quite high that you have heard of the Izumiya Koi farm. This breeder is doing very well in breeding Yamabuki. The colors are very intensive to develop slowly and their koi become massive as well. At the Izumiya Koi farm you can spot this variety in sizes up to one meter in length. And probably the most fascinating 
about this oatmeal variety is the very nice skin quality with Fukurin, which I will explain later in this video as well. I have already told you that the Izumiya Co farm do focus on Yamabuki Ogon. But that is not the only thing that they do. Their main focus still is Yamabuki, but they do also breed Gosanka. Very nice Kohaku and Showa for example. It seems like over the years they started to breed more and more Gosanka varieties. Let's also take a short look into one of the heated koi houses that Izumiya is using to grow out his better tosai during the winter when temperatures outside are low. This facility is actually quite modern and it has really a lot of healthy young tosai in it, which I spawned last summer. The facility has 20 ponds, all filled with tosai. The main goal of Ryu Mano in this facility, and that is of course why he is heating this facility up, is to get some extra growth during the winter. Maybe you have watched an earlier video where I explained about Tatagoi and Tatashita. Well, several koi in this house are kept here for the next year and will be grown out during the summer. So the keepers of this breeder are his Tatagoi. The koi of which Ryu Mano thinks this will have the most potential to develop into very nice koi and increase in value if he keeps them for an extra summer. Now what will happen also during the winter is many selections, selections, selections and more selections. Izumiya wants to make sure he is only selecting his most promising young koi and give these the best conditions so these can develop under the best circumstances. So now you have a little bit of background of the Izumiya koi farm, let's continue with our Yamabuki guide. Because of course I do have a very, very nice exemplar of this koi farm in my bowl. Let's go deeper into detail. So the third part is talking about yellow. And we will discuss how yellow develops. And I, pr and I hear you think already, does yellow actually develop, develop itself then? Is it just normal yellow that stays yellow all over the time? Well, yes. Uh, yes, it does develop. A Yamabuki Ogon, when it is young, can be very, very light colored, almost creme colored. And I do believe that some people will probably leave a Yamabuki Ogon for that reason in the store, because it is too light. And they think it will never become really nice, bright yellow. But that actually is the nice part. You do want to select a Yamabuki Ogon as light as possible. Yellow will become deeper and darker over time. So don't worry when Yamabuki that are one or two years old are still a, a little bit yellowish or light yellowish. Actually that is really a good thing because light yellow means that the likelihood that the Yamabuki Ogon will turn orange instead of yellow is, yeah, is, is way higher. And of course you picked a yellow fish, not an orange one. So you do want to keep it yellow and especially when yellow comes in an outside pond with direct sunlight you will see that yellow becomes deeper and darker brighter over time it's just a matter of time before it becomes bright and, and really intense yellow so that is in short how yellow color develops and how it reacts on a Yamabuki so we continue a little bit more about skin quality and this will be about Fukurin so the skin of a Yamabuki has a very nice pattern. And I don't mean a colored pattern by that, but the 3D effect that you can see that is visible in the skin. It's called Fukurin. It can be spot on a lot of varieties, but especially Ogon varieties like this one have it very intensively visible. Fukurin is the Japanese term that is used to describe the 3D effect on the skin. Around each scale you can see that the skin around it is a little bit thicker. This is the white net pattern that you can see on this Yamabuki Ogon. It is often the case that how older the Yamabuki Ogon becomes, the more intensive the Fukurin will start to look. And that gives a very special effect to this simple one colored koi. So a koi doesn't have to be an Ogon variety in order to develop Fukurin. Actually, every koi can develop it. Nowadays you can spot it on, for example, high quality Kohaku, Sanka and Showa. Or for example, on a Chagoi or a Karashi Goi. 
It is also very highly appreciated by koi enthusiasts and also on koi shows. But still, Ogon often have it deeper visible than any other variety. Now, many people do think that selecting a one colored koi is actually a lot easier uh, than a multiple color koi, so like a kohaku with a red pattern. Um, but actually I do think that selecting one color koi might even be more difficult than, um, uh, than selecting koi with a really nice pattern or, or, or a pattern visible with multiple colors. And when we discuss one color koi, you might have heard it in my earlier videos, I do think that body aspects are now really getting more important. And therefore I linked below in this video uh, to a video where I explain different uh, proportions and, and what aspects, characteristics you look for in selecting a koi with a good body posture. So I hope if you want to know more about body that you are going to watch that video. It will really give you a lot of details and it will really help you to become a better hobbyist. Um, and, and yeah, a better hobbyist in selecting koi of course. Um, so when I select Yamabuki, when you look at this Yamabuki Ogon, it's, it's two years old, two and a half years old. I think this one is about 55 cm, uh, 55 to 60 cm. And um, it's from the Izumiya Koi farm, of course. You understood that by now. Um, what I do look for is that the yellow is not too deep already. So because this one is a little bit older, I do accept that the yellow is already quite bright. So it's already very well developed. Uh, but when it is younger, make sure that it is a little bit lighter than this one. So when it is one up to two years old, make sure it is actually as light as possible. Because um, it, it will just become darker over time. It's just a matter of time. Don't worry about it. And the risk you have when you select it too dark, especially on a young one, is that some uh, scales um, are becoming dark red or, or orange and um, so just single scales can get orange but also the whole like the the entire the entire fish fish might get a little bit more uh, towards the orange color instead of the red color and of course that's not the reason why you selected a yellow koi you want it to stay yellow and you don't want it to get orange so that's one but yeah so for Yamabuki Ogon, you want them to be as light as possible, but not only that, you want, to, you want that the, the, the yellow color is as consistent as possible over the entire fish. So you don't want that, for example, in front, in this area, the yellow is deeper yellow than in the tail section. Um, you want it to be evenly uh, the same intensity. And what you especially don't want is that it doesn't have any orange dots or anything that hints that small orange um, wrinkles or dots are developing. Um, so make sure there's nothing that indicates orange visible on the fish. So there's one more thing and that is when you look at the back of the koi. Of course now it doesn't want to... Uh, if you look at the back of the koi, so this, this area, you want to make sure there's a nice... Um, that the scalation there, the scales are like in the right order uh, because this is the first thing that you will see when the koi swims towards you. So you want to make sure that these scales and also the, the big, yeah it looks like these are big scales in that area, you want them to be nicely placed in a nice row uh, because you will immediate, immediately spot it if there's one or two scales that don't have the right order. So make sure you also uh, pay attention to that. I find it quite important this is in short what criteria I use myself to select a good Yamabuki on. And make sure you do really pay attention to the body posture. So again, look down in the description. Make sure you watch the video about body posture. It will really help you um, to select any koi because you do want your one colored koi. So Yamabukis or Karashi Goi or Chagoi or whatever one colored variety you have, you want it to grow massive, to be big. So body is, is key for that. So this is what I wanted to share in this video about Yamabuki Ogon and the Izumiya Koi Farm. Also in a, in a quick glimpse. Um, and I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you liked that. 
So if you did, please make sure you like or comment to this video. It will help me a lot and see you again in the new video. Thanks for watching.